a person or a very successful proponent of this type of depiction is Hans Rosling. Dr. Hans Rosling is a professor of global health and uh, he's a Swedish professor of global health and he's been in TED Talks and all. What sets Rosling apart isn't just his apt observations of broad social and economic trends, but the stunning way he presents them. Guaranteed, you have never seen data presented like this. By any logic, a presentation that tracks global health and poetry trends should be, in a word, boring. But in Rosling's hand, data sings. Trends come to life, and the big picture, which is usually very hazy at best, snaps into sharp focus. I've actually posted a couple of, uh, I've posted a link on a Hans Rosling and in my reference section, and I highly recommend you seeing a couple of his talks where you'll be able to see how he uses visualizations to tell stories and uh, you know get information from them. Now, visualization in its educational or conformational role is really a dynamic form of persuasion. The reason why I said is, most of the times we have people making visualization and they are trying to actually, you know, convince the audience or trying to persuade the audience with the visualizations. There must be a particular moral or a learning from that visualization which they are going to, which they are trying to convey to the audience. And with visualizations, we have a better chance of persuading our audience into uh, what we require. And in one of my demos, I've actually got an example of how one visualization convinced authorities into doing something. Sorry. Now, let me take you through the steps of how to tell stories with your data. The first and foremost thing is you'll have to get your data. Data drives your story and design of your visualization. Once you get your data, ask a question. What do you want to really know about your data? Let your question help you decide which tool to use. That's the third step. And again, one of my demos, I'm going to be showing you how certain kind of tool was not apt for the question that I asked. So you can also see why choosing the tools is also important. The next step is to explore your data. Search for trends, patterns and differences and again do it across categories, space and time. Once you have done that, once you have done the digging, have you found the story you have to tell? If you've got your story, then it's time for the final step where you design the visualization and put the finished graphic in place. It's all up to you to share this visualization after that. That said, let's go and have a look at Power Map. Power Map, as I told initially, it was formerly codenamed as GeoFlow. Power Map is a 3D visualization tool for Excel 2013. It's actually an add-in for Excel 2013, which you can download from uh, the internet. I have put the download link for Power Map in my reference slide. Power Map is able to plot the geographical data visually, and the best part is you'll be able to analyze data on a 3D globe. It's so unlike the traditional way of uh, spatial analysis that we had, where we just had 2D maps. Right here with Power Map, we can have 3D visualizations. And another good thing about it is we will be able to create visual tools with cinematic experiences, which we can use to share with the others. So this tool is really apt for making presentations or you know visualizations, and especially for storytelling. Now, uh, some questions that I might usually get is what are the versions that I can use Power Map on? Right now, Power Map can only be used on Excel 2013 as an add-in to Excel 2013, but we are expecting some announcement from uh, Microsoft as part of their new uh, BI tool, uh, as part of their new uh, tool called Power BI. 
this should be available on the Power BI sites also. We don't have a lot of information. It's supposed to be coming out uh, within a month or two. So once it comes out, we'll be able to get more details. But as of now, we can only see it in Excel 2013. And again, it's only available in uh, the Professional Pro Plus Edition in the board, if I'm not if I'm not wrong, sorry. Now, let's go and have a look at what Power Map is. So for that, I'll be taking you through a demo. Now to use Power Map, first of all, we should have it installed. Once you install the add-in, you should be able to see this icon. So this icon would help you. Uh, if you see this icon, this means that Power Map is installed. Once you have this, you need some data to start working with Power Map. And right now, I've just got some sample data which shows the income of the U.S. states. It's an income data for the U.S. states. As you can see, the state name is kept under the column county name. This is how I got it from the internet. And uh, I got it using Power Query, but you can just find it from the internet, put it into your Excel file. And once you have kept it, you can go to Insert, click on this map, you'll see an option to launch GeoFlow, click on it, and then you can click on New Tour. If you have already made some visualizations, it would appear here, and it looks like I had already made a, new, a tour before, which is what you're seeing here. But for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to be creating a new tour. I click on it, and I would be presented with a different window. So from the window here, you can see that there's an office-like ribbon on the top with some functionalities. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, that this is what we call the tour editor. And this is very similar to PowerPoint in, in that. In PowerPoint, you can see your slides on the left-hand side. And if you want, you can click on the presentation mode and go through each slide one by one. Similarly, for Power Map, each of the slide, or I mean, whatever we used to call slide in PowerPoint, is called as a scene. So you can see here, it's called a scene. And you can create or keep on adding multiple scenes with visualizations. And at the end, you can click on Play Tour, and it's going to show all those visualizations one after the other. 